Hello, I'm Mike Karras, and I want to talk to you today about boundary, uh, comping boundaries with Civil 3D. Uh, there's some great tools in here that I think are overlooked by, by many users, and I think AutoCAD or Civil 3D gets a bad rap saying it's not for surveyors. And, and I, I really truly believe it is, um, or it has the capabilities for a surveyor. Now, granted, you're a small surveying shop that doesn't pull a lot of topos, maybe does some quick stick plats, you know, maybe Civil 3D is overkill. It's kind of like, you know, buying a riding lawnmower for a 100 square foot um, piece of uh, lawn. You, would, you wouldn't do that. So, but I, I kind of want to just show some of the things that, that I do, and one of them is, is comping boundaries and, and the tools that are here and how easy it is to use and some really unique features that I think most people don't realize are here. Um, you know, so obviously, you know, you got to have your, your deed or your plat or in this case, a city baseline and there's no way that I can, you know, go through everything that I'm going to show you or want to show you in this short video. And, and again, that's why we, we've developed our knowledge apps that you can get. And all this information will be documented uh, in greater detail and even provided you with drawing templates. So, um, you know, take a look at our knowledge apps that are available and you'll get more information. But this is just kind of like a, an, an, a, a quick view of how I use the software. And, and hopefully you can see that, you know, we've got a lot of information that we can share and it's and again goes greater in, in detail in our knowledge apps. Now, you know the first thing is either using a line or a polyline, and that's just a simple AutoCAD feature. And you know when I pick my starting point, what I might do next, depending on what my deed calls are, is use the transparent commands, which are over here behind me, and I'll drag them out uh, so you can see them a little bit better. But you know there's some great tools in here. There's like angle and distance. There's um, a bearing and distance or even a uh, azimuth and distance and a deflection uh, distance. So, you know, I found this very useful depending on what the D calls for, for, you know, computing up and plotting out the boundary. So let's say I'm just putting in, I'll do a real quick about, or bearing and distance. So what's nice about this, it kind of gives you an idea of, you know, where you're going and, and what quadrant you're in and, you know, in the bearing of, you know, that you're entering. So, you know, if I go and I say it's going in this direction and then, you know, I would type in my bearing and distance, um, you know, so I put in that bearing and then I go ahead and put in the distance. Now I'm just clicking, but obviously I would enter that, that data in. And, you know, let's say that I, you know, I, and I'm coming this way and we've got our distance there and, you know, and, you know, I'm going to come in here and there's our distance. Now let's say we go into an arc, um, you know, so if I escape out of that and I go into an arc, you know, if I, depending on what date I know, um, maybe I would, you know, be able to do the cord bearing and distance. Um, or if I don't have that and I've got something else, then, you know, maybe I use my line commands up here, which is, you know, curve from the end of object. Um, you know, so if I was to pick this, select that, um, it's got to be a line. So, so that's where you really got to, you know, okay, well, it's not a line, it's a polyline. So I'm going to explode this down to lines. So that's where I might use the line command to, uh, to do this. So let's go ahead and explode that. And um, we'll explode that down and then and then use my line in uh, from end of object. So my idea here is that uh, we're going to go on a radius of, let's say, uh, 39 and we'll do a 42 foot oops, go radius. And then we're going to go. Um, uh, so we'll go, a, let's say, a 25 foot radius with a length of, uh, you know, 32. All right, so we've got that arc in there, and then you know maybe we come off of this line again, and if we just use the line command, you can see there's you know line by bearing uh, an azimuth or angle. Uh, so we'll snap to the end of that, and I'm just going to go into this quadrant bearing and distance, and then we'll we'll come over here. Now I'm going to snap to that just to get the bearing and and quadrant. And I'm just going to back it off a little bit. And I can see that it, if I snap to it, it's 125.68. So let's just say that I, I fat finger that and I make it uh, 120.68. All right. So it didn't close. And what I, you know, at this point, I need to either check maybe it closed, maybe it didn't close. Um, what is the closure? Uh, or maybe I fat fingered a value. Well, a couple things that I've done that also may help set it up is, is customizing your user interface. So when I right click now and I go to measure distance, um, I got, I put that command right there and I can snap to there, snap to there. And it gives me my distance. I'm short by five feet. Um, you know, so using that tool helps it's, it's again, customizing the, 
the uh, your user interface. You can see I put some other features up here as well. Um, but then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to p-edit this and turn this all back into a polyline. All right, so I'm going to um, convert it to a polyline again, just simply by right-clicking. That's a nice feature with Civil 3D. I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to go to Polyline Edit, and I'm going to join, you know, the rest of these objects here. And now that I've got those objects, one of the neat features that I use quite a bit is on the Analysis tab or Analyze tab under Survey is the Coordinate Geometry Editor. So by selecting that, it brings up the dialog box here for me. And in this dialog box, I can import the, uh, the polyline I want to use, which I just drew. And it gives me all the information that, about that line. And it kind of shows you a graphic out in the screen as well. So then I can come down here and say, okay, well, you know, that's supposed to be 125. I fat fingered it. So now I check it. And now that when I do that, it adjusts it. Or if I, you know, the bearing was wrong or whatever, or the curve radius was wrong, I can adjust that. And then it gives you the ability to import it back into um, the, the drawing. So there's some other things you can do with like, you know, balancing it and, you know, adjusting it and so on. But now you can see that it's brought it back in and it's closed it out. I actually got, you know, the other polyline is still there. So I can see what mistake I made and I can go back out and, and actually erase it. So, you know, that, that's just one thing, you know, for doing the boundary comps, using the transparent commands, uh, using that editor there, I think is, is very powerful. And then on top of that, um, again, I go back to my annotation of my labels and I've got, uh, some pretty significant labels that are set up in my, uh, my drawing, in my workspace. And you can see here, um, if I go to notes under line and curves, um, you know, I've got a bunch of other options in here for not only D distances, but, you know, labeling other features within the drawing. If I go to note, um, I've got, you know, boundary partial information. So, you know, if I was to click on this and add, I don't necessarily have to turn it into a parcel object. Um, I could if I wanted to, but again, by putting in some of these notes and, and automating this, it makes it very, very easy to do boundary comps. Um, and like I said, there's a lot more to this. Um, I cover a lot more of this and more in depth in our, our like I said, our boundary comp with Civil 3D Knowledge app. So uh, I just wanted to give you an idea, show you some, maybe you picked up some cool tips that you didn't know about in, in this particular video, but Again, more of this information is covered in greater detail in our knowledge app. So uh, check them out. They're priced at less than a cup of coffee for certain, you know, each, most of them, if not all of them, you know, they range between $1.27 to maybe $3.87. So they're, they're very affordable for any user uh, if you're using Civil 3D. And, and even some of this stuff is available um, just for the AutoCAD user. Uh, we're doing a lot of hybrid stuff with Carlson and other uh, software applications. So at the end of the day, if you're doing, uh, you know, after you process all your data, you're really just drawing CAD. Well, you can take advantage of some of the really cool features that AutoCAD has um, if you're using Carlson on top of AutoCAD or some other application on top of AutoCAD. But um, I'm using Civil 3D. I think Civil 3D it does have the power. It actually has more power, um, especially because of the databases. And um, you got to think of it differently. You're dealing more with data rather than just drawing dumb lines, arcs, and text. And, and again, it's not for everybody, and, and, and I'm not going to say that it's 100% perfect. It's got, you know, some things that need to be adjusted and fixed, but I do feel that it is a great, uh, there's a lot of great applications for it. So uh, as you'll see here, and you check out our knowledge app, you'll see how we're using it and um, how you might be able to apply those same techniques and processes.